Hello, I am Jayantu Chatterjee and as you know we are discussing this, there are various issues related to uh, new goods and services, new product, new service management. This is the ninth session. In the last session I ended with this screen uh, uh, that is in front of you, the five steps to generate creative ideas. We discussed the dis distinction between ideas and opportunities. We know opportunities are ideas plus plus and we are actually looking for opportunities and we discussed that how you can test ideas uh, whether they are can be converted into opportunities, whether they have that plus plus uh, uh, potential. But obviously, unless you have a plethora of ideas, you cannot actually uh, they say that you need to generate 100 ideas to get one good opportunity identification. So, this quantity of idea generation is also very important. So, in organizations therefore, we should have a structured process to generate ideas and to record them and then uh, processes to filter them and come up with uh, convert them into opportunities. So, uh, the five steps we say are preparation, incubation, insight development, evaluation and then elaboration. So, in a way you can say these are the five steps of generating ideas which have the potential, uh, they are not like uh, you know um, kind of wild figments of imagination, they are actually uh, coming out of a structured process. So, that there is a potential of converting them into opportunities. Preparation, incubation, insight development, evaluation and elaboration. So, the short recap of the last session is that we have different kinds of trends and also we can find out gaps. So, trends and gaps in the market integrated with the entrepreneurial characteristics can generate the new goods and services, new products and new complete new businesses can be created in the process. This is what we discussed uh, in the last couple of sessions. In this session, we are going to discuss some nitty gritties about how to generate good ideas, good in the sense that these are uh, ideas which are uh, structured for evaluation for opportunity uh, assessment. So, they are not like you know wild imagination, but uh, in, a, in a structured process that can feed into your funnel for opportunities. So, brainstorming focus groups, library and internet research, these are three uh, things that I will discuss briefly uh, in this particular session. Now, brainstorming is as you know, uh, in fact, these days sometimes people say do not call it brainstorming, call it body storming, which means that you do not actually sit in just a room and only discuss. Sometimes actually you discuss and then go out into the field, look at uh, actual customers, what problems they are facing uh, and follow the customers and so and then you come back. So, you can actually therefore, combine brainstorming and what we call body storming. That means, uh, forays outside and then discussion. In generally, you as mo most of you know brainstorming and you have already experienced it in different ways. It happens through meetings, you sit together and uh, for good brainstorming, we need people of different profile. That is why we often say uh, have a cross functional team, people coming from marketing, people coming from design, people coming from operations, people coming from uh, procurement, people coming from finance. You sit together and uh, discuss uh, new ideas and therefore, you can get uh, comments from different sources and sort of start uh, massaging uh, the spark, so that it can then show that whether it has a potential to become a fire. Now, uh, the group of people, uh, some rules they have to follow that therefore, that you do not try to uh, dominate, criticize others and, uh, and stop people from articulating uh, good ideas. So, it has to be uh, no criticism has to be a major rule. Free willing is encouraged, that means, if you are uh, thinking aloud, uh, if you are actually going on some wild tangents, for some time you have to allow that, because sometimes those wild tangents can come up with 
something really valuable. The session should not uh, should move in a time bound fashion, you should not be actually you know it should not be like a uh, coffee house uh, stream of discussion, endless discussion. You have to have a time bound target, some process and you should often allow leapfrogging. So, you know people actually use these days uh, what we call yellow stickers, those small notepads, you write ideas, first maybe everybody silently create five ideas, then you stick those ideas and then you see how the, some of the ideas can be combined. These are some processes that many of you will be familiar with and maybe uh, you can find a lot of it uh, on the net different. One particular uh, brainstorming method uh, I will recommend that you uh, uh, search out and read Edward Bono, uh, De Bono uh, suggested it, uh, it is called the six hats. Because normally what happens when you have people from different backgrounds, which is a requirement for good idea generation, when they are together, then we tend to criticize others ideas all the time or we try to find flaws or problems in that idea. So, what De Bono said is that do one thing, uh, there is no do not stop uh, these uh, looking at ideas from different perspectives, but try uh, wear different color, uh, imagine in your mind that you are wearing uh, say once red color hat. So, everybody is thinking about what are the problems. So, not one person is proposing and other person is criticizing and finding problem. All of you together look at the uh, try to find that what are all the problems that can come up in trying to utilize this particular uh, idea and converting it into an opportunity. Then you put a green hat mentally and then everybody tries to see what all good things can happen out of this. Like that you take different approaches, you can read about it, uh, uh, I am not spending too much time, uh, but uh, that can be a very efficient and effective way of managing uh, the normal uh, interpersonal uh, conflict in small group uh, type of discussion which happens here. So, next is focus groups. Focus groups are uh, you, you put together uh, often used for uh, testing new product ideas. So, once you have some uh, rough idea, you might have also done some prototyping etcetera, some of those things we will discuss. But at this stage, uh, it is a kind of brainstorming. So, I have actually put it uh, here, the focus group, where uh, the focus group normally uh, uh, will be a representative sample of the uh, customer segment that you are trying to address. Remember our, our last week's discussion on STP, segmentation targeting positioning, which is absolutely the core requirement uh, for success of a uh, new product launch. So, here you put together, suppose you have you are decide trying to develop a product for uh, senior citizens as we discussed in the last session. These are kind of products which are now uh, worldwide there will be increasing demand because a large section of world population is graying as they say. That means, these are people who are above 65, 70 have disposable income buying capability, but they need special types of products. So, they need special fashion uh, apparels which also suit people with arthritic uh, uh, impairment. So, here actually you put together people. So, if you are developing a senior citizen product, a fashion product for uh, senior ladies, then put together a group of such people and uh, give them the product or uh, give them the idea and then discuss with them and record. So, you need a moderator to kind of keep it in on, on track, but the focus group can give you some excellent ideas. Sometimes we create focus groups, so what we call extreme user group. That means, people who will use the product to its hardest uh, end, uh, the maximum capability. So, sometimes uh, you know uh, mountaineering products or trekking products or sports products are often uh, discussed in focus groups, which uh, are of this extreme user type. That means, extremely active uh, sports people are will be brought together and so that they will be then discussing uh, the pros and cons, what they need, what uh, whether this product meets that requirement. And sometimes you can actually have this discussion with a prototype or that is better 
or sometimes you can even have a kind of a discussion uh, with a proto concept as we say protocept that is possible. And then the last two that we I want to discuss is uh, the library research. Uh, libraries are often neglected sources for fantastic good valuable ideas and uh, simply browsing through uh, trade journals and that these days a lot of these are uh, on the net. So, you know and many libraries today they have this digital corners where it is better than actually doing it at your home sitting at your own desktop because uh, they allow 5, 6 people to sit together and look at screens in synchronism and uh, look at all these trade journals and um, uh, industry journals, professional journals and look at different kinds of ideas, advertisements uh, those are which are there and then that kind spark uh, the, uh, offer a, a new product, new service idea. And internet of course, is a wonderful, wonderful uh, resource today. We have so many powerful search engines where um, you can actually go deeper and deeper uh, from simply finding hundreds and thousands of general purpose hits. You have uh, specific search engines who can actually on your behalf uh, uh, shift through large number of uh, possible uh, hits and come up with a much better precise result. And in coming years, we will see more and more uh, these uh, normal search engines giving way to uh, specialized digital assistants, um, uh, artificial intelligent pr programs, which will be uh, almost an extension of your brain. The search engine internet based uh, uh, research therefore, will increasingly become more and more powerful and easily available affordable and therefore, this will be another uh, interesting way of. Uh, so, in future it is also possible that you will be able to uh, it is not very far off maybe we will see it coming uh, in another uh, you know year or two where you will be able to converse uh, interactively with your computer with a uh, artificial intelligent program and you can brainstorm. Therefore, uh, multiple people can brainstorm with one particular system and they can be located at different places and the system will actually take these different inputs and try to create a collated output. So, this uh, virtual brainstorming, remote brainstorming all these will become easier and easier and so we will see more and more collaborative uh, cooperative uh, uh, sessions creating new ideas. So, more we become adept at this kind of team uh, based group based uh, innovation rather than individual uh, eureka type of innovation we better we will be. So, these will need some practice uh, uh, and, and some preparation from your side if you want to become part of this uh, new product, new service creation process uh, in organizations even at your own entrepreneurial level. And lastly, a um, uh, few other techniques like you can have customer advisory boards. These are, these are actually a kind of focus group, but therefore, you take customers your key customers coming from key segments, uh, your main target areas. And uh, these are people who are well versed into those requirements. This is quite used in industrial uh, products uh, and services uh, innovation and, and you have them uh, bring them in maybe uh, 4 times a year, 3 times a year and, and, and discuss with them all these new developments that are going on and take their opinion to filter shape and uh, create uh, further ideas. A very increasingly popular uh, method very uh, successfully used by companies like Nokia is what is called ethnographic research. This used to be an anthropological method earlier, but now uh, this is being used in new product, new service innovation all the time where you actually uh, become part of a uh, customer community. Uh, you follow a customer around the whole day 
and uh, see how that particular uh, product is going to affect the customer's life. This uh, many interesting uh, products and services particularly which are intensely used by um, uh, customers. So, that is why Nokia used it very successfully where they created different types of mobile phones for different types of customers in different countries uh, by using this anthropological uh, ethnographic research. This is kind of our last slide that within the organization you must have a culture and a process of encouraging new ideas, creating a repository of new ideas, creating a custodian for new ideas, uh, celebrating champions who come up with good ideas that can be converted into opportunities. And uh, also very interesting thing is this idea bank. This is like a, so some of the ideas which uh, at some point of time could not be converted into opportunities because of resource gap or because of competency gap or because of uh, technology uh, development stage. Uh, maybe it is too advanced for the available level of technology. Do not throw those ideas away because we are looking for opportunities which as I mentioned are ideas plus plus ideas that can be converted into uh, viable businesses, feasible businesses. But the ideas that are discarded they should be retained because in future you can come back to those ideas and it has happened in com companies like Xerox, companies like Apple that those idea banks or retained ideas which were originally discarded later on created brilliant uh, new uh, goods and services, new products. Okay. So, and the encouragement and having a structured process, having custodians, having champions and creating this idea bank are very important. And uh, this is a topic uh, that I am not going to discuss in detail, but I am only referring that another very important thing today is because you are creating ideas with many people involved, there is a possibility of your good idea getting leaked, getting uh, usurped by somebody else. It can even happen that some team member may actually leave this job and go to another job and the idea can walk out of the door with him or her. So, therefore, you need to have uh, very um, good methods of protecting valuable uh, ideas and particularly those ideas which can be con converted into opportunities. So, you, you must be you know the names like patent or copyright and all those we will discuss that in a future session in more detail. Here I am only alerting to you that while you are brainstorming, while you are creating new ideas, while you are actually creating your idea bank, you are creating this uh, uh, small projects, large projects to convert ideas into opportunities. Uh, do not forget to protect those ideas and take proper steps at different ways. How those steps are to be taken, what kind of steps are there, we will discuss that. So, uh, at some other session. So, there actually I uh, end our this particular uh, session. Uh, thank you very much and uh, we will now uh, go into the nitty gritties of some ideas that we have discussed in the last week like value proposition, uh, like pivoting and, uh, and, and such ideas. And uh, so, look forward to our next interaction. Thanks.